Welcome to this edition of the Wonder Read Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Dave. And you can find us online at wonderberry.com. Or I am D Wonderly on Twitter. And I'm Brian Keysbury, anywhere the internet can be found. You can leave us a comment, a post, and anything on Reddit, Facebook, using the hashtag Wonderberry. Or our website even has a comment section. We do still have the Reddit page. Our, uh, we have our own subreddit. Yes. Yeah. Our Wonderberry. So how's your week been, man? Yeah. It was a week. Yeah. Oh, I got to get my kite out on Monday. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Um was down to my parents' house, and I was hoping to get it out on Sunday, and Sunday came around, and there was no wind all day long, like just little teasers of a breeze, and this kite's so big, it needs, you know, 15 mile an hour wind. Yeah. But, but then Monday, getting getting around to head back to our own place, and it is windy. Nice and windy, like 18 miles an hour wind all day. Nice. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going out. Sweet. So this kite has like 200 foot of string on each string. It has two strings, like one for each hand. And so you can, you can control it better when you have the two. You can kind of like use them to move it around. Um, so you lay the kite down on its back, walk all the way out till you get the strings just taut and yeah. hold both arms up in the air, pull down on both of them hard and fast as you take a step backwards and the kite shoots straight up in the air like a freaking rocket. It is oh, nice. amazing. And I did nice. that. I got it up in the air and it was glorious. And it's just flying. And I'm getting the hang of it, like moving my arms around to move the kite around. And I have it up for maybe 10 minutes. And then the wind completely turns 90 degrees. And my kite goes completely sideways and catches a tree. Oh. And then it continues to spin. And spin and spin at a ridiculous rate I couldn't even count. And I'm just trying to hold on to keep it from like flying away. Yeah. And eventually the branch broke, the kite came down. <clears throat> and so I had to take my strings, take the kite, sit it up, prop it up take the strings and pass them like hand over hand for two hours to unravel all of that string. Oh. <laughs> so. The kite made it okay though, I'm assuming? Yep, it came out fine. Good. Pretty Good. solid, pretty solid kite. I'm pretty happy with it. Nice. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll have, we'll definitely have to play with that and, uh, my GoPro at some point. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. I could not imagine what it would have looked like to uh, have had a camera on there while it was just spinning away, <laughs> swinging from a tree. Oh, that would have been so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Well, the I... zoo opened over here over last weekend and this week, so. Nice. I've been three times already with the kids, so that's uh that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. No, we have uh we have a yearly pass that we pay for. And it's like a hundred bucks for the pass, otherwise it's uh like ten bucks for kids and fourteen bucks for adults. So after, you know, Two or three trips, if I bring the whole clan out here, two or three trips, the thing pays for itself. Nice. So, yeah, it's really nice. And Alice absolutely loves the zoo. 
we went through we were over there on Wednesday Wednesday yesterday no yeah yesterday I took her yesterday and uh four days ago she loves fish and we went through the Oracle aquarium section like four or five times yesterday it was just like more and more and she's jumping around and squealing and running around looking at everything and it's pretty cool there you go man you gotta bring her up she's yeah she's uh she's appreciating things a lot more now you know even at two and a half she's just yeah and if she likes fish man she would love my place (laughs) oh she'll sit in front of your fish tank for an hour there you go easy babysitter we call that a babysitter dave (laughs) oh yeah oh you know what we forgot to mention at the beginning um we have a giveaway going oh yes i have a 25 dollar gift card i have a link that will be in the description um, share it with your friends, your family, um, share it with your grandma. She needs to know what we're doing. Um, so it is through gleam.io and through there, if you're subscribed to our YouTube, you just confirm that you're subscribed to the YouTube or for new people who will encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that enters you in the contest to win a $25 App Store gift card. And it's Is that in, just the Google Store, or are we doing App Store of Choice between Google and iTunes? I, I, I figured App Store of Choice, and then I'll just... Okay. I have, I have the, uh, the credits set aside to purchase the card, but I figured, you know, if somebody... If the winner was an Apple person, a Google card wasn't going to do them any good, so I might as well wait yeah. and let them make the pick. Outstanding. So, no, that sounds really good, man. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to a giveaway. We our first little giveaway thing. Figured after a few months of this, we could start doing some fun stuff. Yeah. Um, hopefully try and do some more. I think I set it up to go for a month, I think. All right. I don't remember. Yeah, when, more... is, when, when, are we, when are we doing the end date of this, then? How long do they have to, to subscribe up when we do the, the, the giveaway? Uh, uh... Bear with us, people. This is our first time doing this. <laughs> um, let's do it not next week's episode, but the week after that. So we will announce the winner on episode... <clears throat> Well, I think I already um, set the date when I accidentally launched it. Ah. Okay. Check the link. We will have when the uh, <laughs> when the giveaway is over in the link. So we'll make sure that we get that information out since, you know, we're uber professional and have all the information right at our fingertips for this. Because it's not like we're both standing in front of computers or anything. Um... So, yeah, apparently I just don't remember <laughs> what I made our password. Sweet. All right, yeah, so the, the, the link will be in the description. <laughs> yep. We'll, well, we'll do it that way. The link will be the time that the giveaway ends will be in the description. All that information will be in the description. Yep. It'll be there if I remember to find it later. That's the trick. Yeah. That's the, that's the trick. So yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm, I, I, I use my speedy rewards points to get the card. Um, yeah, because I, I, I have, there's there's a speedway down the road from our house, and I stop there like every couple days. Um, I get snacks for work. I get my gas there. Um get those bonus points on the red bulls i buy myself gift cards every once in a while to get some google play credit i Um, use i use speedy speedway and speedy points pretty much exclusively for my ubering because just you know every three weeks or so i get 50 cents off a gallon 
Yeah. So, you know, I'll run I'll run my SUV down till I've got like 12 miles before empty and then I'll hop on over to a speedway and fill it up, and put 15 16 gallons of gas in it. 50 cents off a gallon. It feels really nice right about now. Right. See, I, I think don't, I filled up today I for like a for buck points, 78 though. a gallon. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't even remember what I, don't remember what I paid last. See, I just, I use it's... mine to get myself, like, either Google Play or Amazon gift cards. And then I can, you know, it depends on if I want to get a gadget or if I want to get a movie or a game or something. Um, yeah. And it's it's surprising how quickly I can build up points. Because I, you know, I'll I'll get snacks and a drink for work. And if I do it there, <clears throat> I, you know, I can... I get those points and they, I try to focus on, uh, like, Oh, buy two of these and get a bonus 500 points. So, and I, you know, and I see that I'm like, Oh, there's my snack for the day. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what, that's what I'm drinking for today. Um, that's not a bad system. Yeah. You know, and I was, I, I, when I was doing it super frequent, I was to the point where I was getting like a $25 gift card every 30 to 40 days. Nice. You know, and that's a movie or two on Google yeah. Play. Or yeah, that's some, not bad at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, that rewards me for being, I, I don't know, for just doing the stuff I was going to do anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I, no, like, that's, uh, I like I like Speedway because their gas is actually Marathon gas, and Marathon's the only American gas company. So, <laughs> that's uh, I've I've really enjoyed using my Speedway rewards, and there's other reward systems out there that are really good. If you uh, at least out here in the Midwest, if you have Kroger. The Kroger fuel points oh, can get you some really good savings on fuel every once in a while. Yeah. And you can also utilize the Kroger fuel points at the Shell stations. Yep. So, um, like, every every few weeks or so, I'll end up doing a tank on Shell because going through T-Mobile, being a T-Mobile subscriber, every Tuesday they have the T-Mobile giveaway. And every... Two or three weeks, they give away 25 cents off a gallon of gas at Shell. Nice. Up to 20 gallons. So you're kind of restricted to 20 gallons. But it's another one of those things, you know, they've got Fandango movie tickets all the time, $5 off lift rides. Um, every once in a while, they'll do a bigger, a bigger ticket item. Uh, I know a couple months ago, they gave everyone one share of T-Mobile stock. Which I think has almost doubled since they they gave us the stock, which is kind of nice. Damn, it's like we're sixty something bucks now. Um, and then this year as well, they had a free year subscription. They did the same thing last year too, because I had it last year. Uh, free year subscription to uh, MLB TV. Yep. So they, they... I have gotten to watch most, if not all, of my Dodgers games at a market. They, Which has been outstanding. They started that right after I left T-Mobile. Oh, darn. Uh, well, the problem with you, though, is is that you're stuck in... Because blackout rules apply. So it wouldn't be any good for Cubs games. For us. What? Why not? Because we're in the blackout zone for the Cubs. Ah... Uh. Yeah, blackout rules are atrocious. That's that's the one thing that's killing sports, uh, cutting cutting the cord for sports, is the blackout rules all still apply. Yeah. It's it is the most annoying, the most annoying thing about trying to watch sports out of market all the time or even in market that way. Hmm. So, you know what though, I do. Only pay about fifty dollars a month for two lines of cell phone service. So I pay 
$208 a month for six lines of unlimited everything and one data line that's for my sync up for my car, which includes a five port uh, hotspot. Bang. So I don't do half bad with T-Mobile. They, their, their whole T-Mobile one, when you start adding on lines, it gets cheap. It, yeah. It gets really cheap. Cause it's like, I think it's, it's like 50 bucks a line for the first two or something like that. Or it's like, yeah, the the first 70 one... and then it's like 20 or 25 for every additional line after that. It's super cheap. Yeah. Plus you get, if you do the auto bill pay, it's five dollars a month off per line. Whoa. So that saves me thirty dollars or thirty-five dollars a month right off the top. But the cool thing about the the auto pay is is that there's no penalty for paying online early. So I pay it the way I would normally pay it, which is about two weeks early for before my bills due. Yeah. And I save myself thirty five bucks a month. For the seven lines that I have. Nice. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. Huh. So T Mobile's been a way I've been able to save quite a bit of money that way. So I shouldn't I don't know if I should have switched or not. I don't know. I like Fi. I actually have service at my parents' house now, which is, you know, a big deal. Yeah, well it Fi piggybacks off what both T Mobile and Sprint and US Cellular. There's three of them now. Oh, nice. See, the problem is, is that with my uh, with my Ubering, because I'm streaming music for yeah. 20 hours a week on a cell, and just as much as I'm on the thing, I yeah, average between 25 and 35 gigabytes a month. Yeah, of data. And that's with being on Wi-Fi all the time when I'm at home. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I am what they would classify a heavy user. Yep. See so, you now so, if I if I weren't like either at home or at at my store dang near a hundred percent of my time, I there's no way I'd have five. It would not be yeah. feasible. The 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 pay by blocks, like I love their payment method and I love the way they run the system and I'm like their model is absolutely amazing. Unfortunately for as amount of usage as I have, it's not feasible for me to switch to Fi because I looked into it. And then I also, you know, I've got phones for my kids and so and one for my mom. So, you know, I'm running six lines and for what I'm paying I wouldn't get, I wouldn't even reach five gigabytes a month for all my lies on Fi yep. for what I'm paying on T-Mobile. So, you know, it's, it's a great service. Don't get me wrong, but it's not, it's, it, you have to really check your usage on stuff to figure out what would be good for it. What wouldn't yep. I would use Fi if they like my, my wish and desire would be that Google would release a, wireless hotspot for Fi. I would buy that. I would pay for a wireless, a Fi wireless hotspot. Well, they do have, you can buy data only SIM cards to put in devices. And I don't, but I don't know if you could get a, I thought there, I thought they only, the device that was only worked on two devices right now. With the wireless SIM card. I don't know. Um, so Fi, because it has to be able to work on both CDMA as well as GSM. Yeah, so Fi and all those bands is like there's only four devices that are technically supported. You know, the I think uh, let the, me guess that's the Nexus 5X, the Nexus 6P, the Pixel, and the Pixel XL. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How did I guess? So remember two weeks ago when when my five X boot looped. Yeah. Um. So I still have my my glorious old LG Nexus Five from like two thousand and two. 
or two thousand I think two thousand thirteen really. Um which yeah, was, yeah, something like that. Um which is still a freaking fantastic phone. Still worked great. And I thought, well, I wonder what happens if I put my little Fi SIM card in there and I pulled out pull you know, I had my SIM card just sitting and pop the tray out, put the little adapter in, put the Fi SIM card into my Nexus five, and guess what? Cell phone service. Well, yeah, because it runs, you you would only have cell phone service off of the bands that it would work on the five. Yeah. So that's where that's where you have to look at the bands. Like I'm sure that the world phones that they sell, and I think probably the One Plus phones have a universal band. Yeah. So that you can plug in for pretty much everything. Um, those should technically work with Fi. They're just not supported by Fi. Or supported by Google, rather, for, for Fi. That's, that's that's the hilarious part, is when it when I tried to load up the Fi app, it gave me an error. So it said, sorry, your device isn't supported. Fi will not work. But it was still, it was working enough to open the app and tell me that. <laughs> and, then, and then for yeah, me to continue it's... to use it for about two weeks. Cool. Right? It's like, huh. Thanks, guys. Yeah, not bad. So, yeah, yeah that's... Uh, <laughs> wireless is fun. Yep. Not really. <laughs> now, they're, now they're talking about a T-Mobile Sprint merger again, with T-Mobile being at the helm instead of Sprint being at the helm, like last time they talked about it. That would and be... And actually... That would be as nice. crazy as this sounds, it might actually work this time because of the Trump administration's such hyper focus on uh, corporations. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, saving money, making things easier. That's what it's all about, right? So let's. Well, let's move on. Um, <laughs> more life hacks. Smart lock on life my hacks. phone with my watch and the Bluetooth connections. Yeah, I don't really use the smart lock with my watch. No? No, I... Because it's the fingerprint scanner, I figure if it's in my pocket, I can just tap the back when I pull it out of my pocket. I'm fine. What I do use the smart lock for is my car. Yeah. So when my phone connects to the Bluetooth, it automatically unlocks my phone. The other smart lock feature I use is on my Chromebook. Oh. And I'm starting to do this on my computer as well. So on my Chromebook... I can click to log in, and if my phone is on and, like, you know, the screen is unlocked, yeah, it won't require me to use a password to log on to my Chromebook. I can just click it because it registers that my phone is on in the area and uses that as a secure connection. Yeah, but you, does your computer need a Bluetooth connection for that? I don't remember if it's Bluetooth or if it's Wi-Fi. Okay. I need to look into I that. I think it's I think it's Bluetooth, and that's just for my Chromebook. Now, my computer, Windows just recently released a new update with its authentication system, where you have your Windows or your Microsoft Authenticator on your phone. Yeah. You can actually use that to unlock your computer. Hmm. Which makes life a lot easier for a lot of different things. Right. So I can have my 30-something character password for my computer and not have to type it in every time I get to my computer. Yeah. Which is really, really nice. I need to get that set up. I, I don't know why, but I assumed it was a Bluetooth thing and my laptop doesn't have Bluetooth. 
which no, this is a those. Windows Authenticator authentication system. Yeah, I'm gonna have to because it'll have to also authenticate that. for Xbox and a bunch of other stuff too. Nice. Which well, I don't have an Xbox, but I use the Xbox app on my computer for a few I, things. I have an Xbox. Eventually, I'll get probably an Xbox One. What? Oh, whatever I, the next generation after one is. I've got an original. It's still hooked up to my TV. I've I I went <laughs> I stuck with the PlayStation line that whole time. Yeah. <clears throat> PS One, PS Two, PS Three. Haven't I have not bought a next gen console. I switched to PC for gaming. Yep. Um, I I got an Xbox because we knew we could hack it and on the original one you could put a linux kernel on it run uh um and i don't remember what the actual ui is called anymore but um so i ended up putting a 160 gig hard drive in it and being able to rip the games to the drive and launch them automatically without needing the disc anymore nice yeah, um, and it's held out. PlayStation, the PlayStation, the original PlayStation Three, the big fat one. Yeah, it 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 allowed for a Linux side load as well for a while, and then they stopped it arbitrarily, and then there was a lawsuit. And now, if you used it, you can prove that you use that option, and they took it away from you. You were eligible for like I don't know. I think it ended up being like seven bucks. I mean, PlayStation had a shell out of shit ton of money, but everybody got like a very small, minuscule amount of that. Gotta love class action lawsuits that has everybody involved. Right? There's a class action lawsuit involved at the for the 5X and the boot loop issue currently. And I'm like, uh, there's also know. one that just started with Huawei with the 6P and the boot loop issue as well. Yeah. I don't think those are a monetary class action. I think it's more of a to get Google to acknowledge it and do something to fix and help. I mean, I'm on my second 6P because of the boot loop issue. So yeah, that's I'm on. And my... the other one they're they're tackling in this in this one is the uh, the battery shutdown at like you know sometimes my phone will be at 30 percent and then it'll shut down because of lack loss of battery power. <laughs> It was a lot worse when it was colder. You know, I think my so I think my Nexus S did that too. Way back, the old Samsung. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm actually debating not getting the next Pixel when I upgrade my phone. I'm thinking about going back to uh, OnePlus because yeah. that OnePlus Five looks sweet for like half the cost. Yeah, I'm gonna try and hold out and see what happens. I I usually upgrade every two years, so I skip the Pixel run. So the Pixel 2 would be the next one I'm looking at. Or OnePlus is releasing theirs here shortly, so that should be nice when that releases. Yep. I uh, think, I am i don't know. been looking at some different ones, but I think I'm going to go Chromebook first. Although I... I almost want to hold out for the Samsung Chromebook Pro. Yeah. But I don't know I yet. don't know if I will go back to Chromebook again after this one. I think no. I might actually stick with actual laptop that does a lot more. Seeing what all I do with a laptop, it would be better for me, I think. And I will spend the extra money to get something like a surface book yeah or something I, along the, a, a two in one of some sort i'm realizing though what the stuff that i do do in windows i need a proper desktop for with some serious power the stuff that i do that's mobile I I don't even I could I I could mostly do it on my phone. Yeah, and and the Chromebook's good for that as long as you have an internet connection. Yeah, 
And yes, there's a lot of stuff that you can get to do offline stuff, but even that is not full featured for most of it. Well, with the with the new ones having Android apps available, that's going to be a lot different. That is true. The the advent of Android. Now, I'm wondering though, because I haven't been able to play with the Android apps thing. Which apps are going to actually be available for this? Yeah. Because one thing I learned having a Nexus player, and we talked about this with Android TV not long ago, just because it has access to the Play Store doesn't mean you actually get a full range of apps. Mm, I There's a good chance I could be wrong, but if I remember right, I think... It would the apps were enabled automatically by default for the store as long as the specs were acceptable, and right. then the developer had to disable it. So if a developer didn't want so their it was app auto on a enabled unless it had been disabled. Yeah, which that when makes I was that makes reading, some sense, I guess. Yeah, when I was reading about it found out that Mojang and Microsoft disabled Minecraft for Chromebooks, which was kind of upsetting. That is interesting. Yeah. I guess they don't want competition on a laptop style with their... Who knows? Well, it's a... I mean, it would be a PE version which is what they're trying to push between, you know, Android devices and iOS devices and the Windows 10 edition. Um, Unless there was something with the resolution switchover that was wonky. Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, phones are 16.9, aren't they? Say what? I said the phone, the aspect ratio for a phone is 16.9, isn't it? No. No. What is the aspect ratio of a phone? Well, they they vary some. I think. Uh, oh yeah, that's probably what it is then. Because uh, that would be one of those games, though, that varying the aspect ratio could really screw you up pretty bad. Not really, because you can you, um, you can move around pretty good. Yeah. Having definitely having a wider aspect ratio does help, but. Yeah, like a four, a four three, or three four or whatever, is a bit is a bit wonky, but it's yeah. doable. Yeah, I can see that. Hmm. Well, we've been running about this for about thirty minutes now, brother. Okay, let's finish it up with my product recommendation, my life hack product. All right, um, you do a life hack product, and I'll do a life hack product, and we'll finish this thing up. How's that sound? Okay. All right, um, what's your product, man? Lock laces, which we will also have a link in the description for. Um, I found them on Amazon looking for some crazy, very specific colored and patterned <laughs> shoelaces for Christy. <laughs> Like they have to be these two colors with this sort of pattern. I'm like, I did <sighs> okay, and accidentally found these lock laces that are elastic, and then have a little clip that you can push to adjust them. And mm -hmm. once you get them set, you can just slip your shoes right on and off, and they're amazing. I did some math. I did some timing when I tie my shoes it takes me about a minute and a half to get them both tied like on and tied when i use the lock laces it's right around 45 seconds probably a lot faster than that now that i got it so i don't even adjust the little slider thing yeah so at 45 seconds i put my shoes on once a day i saved 273 Point seven five in minutes every year, not tying shoes. 
over 50 years, that's 13,687 minutes or 228 hours or nine and a half whole days. If I live 50 more years, I (laughs) have nine and a half whole days saved by not tying my shoes anymore. Nice. That's over a week. I use I use a very similar product to that, except mine are like uh silicon almost like a rubbery band. Yeah. That you loop through and then they they kinda of connect to each other and you can crisscross and make them tighter or looser or whatever. Nice. And I they are some of the most amazing products. They're they're tight enough when you put them on that you can actually go running in them. So they're just as tight and adhere to your feet as as regular shoelaces. They just you can slip them on and off, which for a big guy like me it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. And saves you nine and a half whole days, Dave. That's a over that's a week. actually kind of impressive. Right? And that's that's what I really want. I was like, how much time do I really spend tying my shoes? Sit, sit down. Time yourself one time. Yeah. Be like, how long does this take? And time yourself. And then imagine not doing that every day for the rest of your life. Nice. <laughs> I, I was kind of so blown the, away. That's that's awesome. Yeah, get lock laces or something along those lines. One of those types of brands. They are actually quite amazing. Yeah, you'll you you won't regret it. And they come in a variety of colors and yeah, all sorts of stuff too. So you can match, mix and match, and all sorts of fun stuff with them. Yep. Yeah. So when I was setting everything up with my computer and my living room and everything else, uh my living room being entertainment side and I bought a steam link to plug in so that I could run my steam games on my living room and I could sit out there and, and play my games. I, the latency over Wi-Fi. Yes. Wi-Fi is pretty quick, but there is a delay. And when you're playing games, that delay is bleh. I found that they're, they're called power line ethernet adapters. And literally you plug them into your wall, a powered outlet And in your house, or as long as it's on the same circuit, so the circuit breaker, you just plug another another one in on another location. You plug your Ethernet cables into those, and it utilizes the power lines in your house as an Ethernet run. Nice. So I have one at my router that connects into my router, and then I have one in my office that goes to a switch that runs everything in my office so everything is wired connection and then i have one over by the tv that i plug my steam link into and so i have a wired technically i have a wired connection from my computer to the steam link for i think i'm getting about three or four milliseconds of lag between the two nice That's versus the th- 25 or 30 that i was getting over wireless yeah so yeah, it's these things they depending on what kind you buy. I bought the the gigabit 600 milli, uh megabits per second ones. Um I could go faster, but why? Yeah. Um right now it's not necessarily needed. Eventually I'll probably end up going even faster and go to true 1 gigabit speed stuff, but they're they're not that expensive. You get a starter kit of two for like thirty five or forty bucks. Um, I just bought two of those starter kits, and I have four of them. So they're they're really awesome. They're easy to set up. Literally, plug it into a wall, plug it into your router, or your your whatever you're connecting to, and it's it's that. You don't have to run Ethernet throughout your house. You don't have to do any of that. And I've got an old house with old wiring. So I think this my house was built in the 30s, or the 20s, rather. And wiring looks like it was upgraded probably a couple decades ago. Hmm. And it still works really, really well, even for an old house. Yeah. 
So I have to look into that to get some better speeds in my upstairs. Um, James uses them in his apartment. So these even work for apartments. Huh. Interesting. So, oh, you know what? Yeah. I think my upstairs is on a different breaker box. Give it a shot. See what it happens. Yeah. If it is, it is. If it isn't, it works. You know, you can always return it if it doesn't work for you. Yep. So. Well, Thanks. cool. Those were some some life hacks that we have. I'm sure there'll be more in the future. We'll probably tag them in on the end of episodes every once in a while. Just different stuff that we do to make our lives a little easier. Yep. Yeah. So, till next week, guys. You guys have a wonderful week. See you guys next weekend. Yeah.